The Source engine has four, technically five, types of props. Static props that never move. Physics props that move when you pick it up or something else interacts with it. Dynamic props which either just follow along and not a prop. Or dynamic props that move on their own. And ragdolls. Ragdolls are technically prop physics, except that they have multiple moving parts. In this video I will show how to do all four of them, minus the non-moving dynamic prop, because it's just the same as a prop static and prop physics in the way of making it. The first thing that you need to do is open Blender and have a model in there. Where it comes from is completely irrelevant. And then you also need to make a collision model for it. Because the collision model is the one and only thing that decides what part of your model can impact with the world or other objects. I have already made a video on making these collision models. Link to that is in the description down below. So check that one out before continuing. Also very important, if you have a model, like this ragdoll here, the weight of the entire dumpster would be supported on the wheel bones. The bones cannot calculate compression properly, they can only calculate rotation. Instead, the collision mesh of the wheels don't actually touch the floor, and underneath this dumpster model I have a cushion of collision mesh. The weight of the dumpster will now be supported on this cushion instead of the wheels. As you can see on the right hand side, I have my dumpster model and the physics model without an armature. These two are for the prop static, prop physics and non-moving prop dynamic. They don't have any moving parts and you don't need any bones for them. Now beneath you can see there is a dumpster armature that contains a dumpster diner, a phi diner and a phi ragdoll. Those are the bones and the mesh for the dynamic prop that moves and the ragdoll. Because these have moving parts, of course you need your mesh to be rigged to the bones that you want it to move along. And the physics mesh must also be rigged to the same bones. Before you can export your model, you need to make sure that the materials in the Material tab have a sensical name. The names in the Material tab will be the names of the VMT files that the game wants to use. Also important, make sure that all transforms are applied. So when you go to the Object tab, Location must be zero, Rotation must be zero, and Scale must be one. If you don't know how to apply the transforms, just go to Object, Apply, Apply all transforms, and you're done. Now to export the model, go to the Source Export tab, select the Export folder, select those meshes that you want to export, and then export those three objects at once, or you can select one object at one time and just export that one selected object. Now that the objects are exported, it's time to compile them. To make a prop, all you gotta do is have a QC file that lists the model name, a model line, the left dumpster here is the name of the model internally, which has absolutely no use. The second dumpster is the name of the SMD or the DMX that you exported. You also need a sequence, which is just an idle animation. Again, first dumpster is the name of the sequence. The second dumpster is the name of the model that you want to use for the sequence. Then you have CD materials. That defines where the VMT and VTF files of the model will be stored. Very important. Listen closely. This CD materials line only says models slash my name slash dumpster. 
That's because the game already assumes that it has to look for the models slash funreel slash dumpster folder inside of the materials folder of the game. Next, you have surface prop. Surface prop is the surface property of what your model should be. The Valve Developer Community Wikipedia has a page on all the available surface properties that you can have. Then the collision model. It uses the Phi SMD that we exported, has a mass of 50 kilograms, and it is concave. And then below, for static props, we have the static prop command. The physic props are technically the exact same, except that at the very bottom you have key values to let it know that it is supposed to be a physic prop. Now if you want to know what basis you can use, open scripts propdata.txt. This file lists all the available bases for your game. Now prop dynamic. The only difference here is that we have a secondary sequence which is the actual animation that your prop has. The reference sequence called ref uses the model itself and then there's a sequence called anim, which uses an exported animation. And then below in collision joints, I have concave per joint. Now ragdoll is technically the same as physics, except the sequence is called ragdoll, and it has the activity die ragdoll inside of this ragdoll sequence. And the collision joints lists all the joint constraints that I want to have. Now to compile this prop. Open crowbar and drag and drop your QC file on it. The compile tab will open. You can either compile one single QC file at a time, or you can click on the file dropdown and click on folder. Now that the model is compiled, we need textures and materials for it. Open VTF Edit and either click on File, Import and import one TGA, PNG or whatever into a VTF that you can export. If you want to convert multiple textures at once, go to Tools, Convert Folder, Pick the input folder, pick the output folder, and then tell it what file type it should look for for the conversion. In my case, I tell it to look for TGA files. There's also a recursive option that looks for every subfolder in there, and a create VMT files option, which I don't use. And then just click on convert and wait for your files to be finished. Now we have the textures, but we don't have the material. For the material, you can just make a text file that ends in .vmt, but make sure that you have Windows set up to show the extensions of your files, else you will just make a txt file called material.vmt.txt and that is useless. Because this is a tutorial, I'm just going to make a very bitch basic material that just says vertex lit generic, which is the shader that props need, followed by base texture, my diffuse, and normal map, which is the normal map. So, now we have materials and textures, but the materials are in some random folder, not in the game. First, remember where your CD materials was. In my case, it was in materials, models, slash, Mr. Funreal, slash, dumpster. Copy your VMT and VTF files and create that folder inside of your game files. And now you have materials and models in the game, so you could, for example, open Hammer Editor and place the props into a map. You can see I have a static prop that does not move, a dynamic prop 
that moves based on the animation I made it. A physics prop that you can punt around. And then the ragdoll that I can punt around and it has moving parts because it's a ragdoll. And that is all you have to do to make a prop. Now if you want to replace a prop, it's a little bit different. Because you need to retain data like the bounding box, the weight, else you get consistency errors and you will not be able to play online with your model replacement mod. Now to replace the prop, you first have to find the prop that you want to replace. The easiest way I know is to find the prop on a map. Decompile the map, open that in Hammer, inspect the model to check what model name it has, extract all of these model files from the VPK files, and then decompile that. Now you have a QC and the actual model. Import the actual original model into Blender. Then scale your model to the scale that the original model was. Apply all the transforms. Export it. Take the original models QC that you decompiled. Then change the body group to use your model, the sequence to use your model, CD materials, and if you have it, the physics mesh. Although in online games, the host forces its physics mesh onto every client, so while the collision mesh wouldn't work online, at least it would work in single player. And then you just compile this QC file. And now you have a replacement prop. Congrats. And that is all there is to know about making and replacing props. If you need help with modding, join the Dead for Mods Discord server, where many people, including me, can help you out. But please, for the mercy of Lucifer himself, don't join the server and immediately send me a DM, because that is hella annoying. I also have my own Discord server, which is mostly about shit posts and just talking, but I also have a channel where I and other people can show what they are currently working on and exchanging information. And that's all for today. Take care, until next time.